Good morning. I cannot imagine that there is a person in this room or watching online that isn't touched somehow themselves or by someone they or with someone they love by addiction, neurodiversity, loneliness, isolation, disordered eating, anxiety, suicide attempts or completion, depression, or some other kind of mental illness or mental health issue. I would ask you to raise your hands, except I don't need to. I know that every hand in this place would be raised because we are not alone. One of the things that happens when I preach is I go down this rabbit hole of studies, especially when it's on mental health. And so I'm going to give you a little taste of some of the things I found this week. In the 2023 Mental Health uh, in America study, um, it was shown that 21% of adults are experiencing at least one mental illness in this country, which is roughly 50 million people. And 55% of those 50 million people have not received any treatment for the mental illness. Over 12.1 million people in this country in the last year reported serious thoughts of suicide. And that figure doubles if you are a person of color. The Trevor Project's 2023 survey of mental health for LGBTQ youth showed that 41% of LGBTQ young people seriously attempted, considered attempting suicide in the past year. 56% of LGBTQ young people who want mental health in this country were not able to get it. The Pediatric Mental Health in America 2023 report, this is all brand new statistics. 16% of youth surveyed reported having at least one major depressive episode in the past year. More than 2.7 million children and adolescents are living with severe mental depression, and 60% of youth who want help can't get it. Our youth need help. Nicole is always saying that. Our youth are suffering. 6% of youth surveyed reported having a substance use disorder in the last year, whether it be with alcohol or another drug. In addition to the U.S. Surgeon General declaring a crisis in loneliness, he also declared youth mental health a major crisis in our country. Leading causes of death of teens, uh, youth, ages 16 to 24 in the United States. Top three, what do you think? Say again? Suicide. suicide is part of a bigger category called firearms, death by firearms, number one cause of death for youth in the United States, including suicide, homicide, accidents, or undetermined. Number two? Car accidents. And number three? This one surprised everybody in the 9 o'clock. Nope. Nope. Overdose, drug and alcohol, overdose, number three. This is all, and um, before 2023, the previous one was 2016, and none of the motor vehicle accidents was number one by a long shot, and everything else was, like, way down below, and it's completely flipped. Oh, my gosh, the psalmist writes. Every day I cry to you. Every day I call on you. My hand, I lift my hands to you. I pray to you. I don't know about you, but that psalm, I can feel it in my bones. It reminds me it, uh, that I feel this way too. Doesn't matter, it was written thousands and thousands of years ago. It's true today. And for me, it brought up feelings of desperation, hopelessness, anguish, anger, dread, Loneliness, yearning, grief, pain. I felt trapped, despair, but I also felt some hope. The UCC is recognizing today as Mental Health Sunday, and they, the Mental Health Ministry Group has this wonderful resource and toolkit for us. And in it um, was this quote that I was like, oh, that's beautiful. 
If you have never experienced the devastation of a serious mental illness, then Psalm 88 that Susan read for us is a place to begin. Because sometimes it is precisely within our wounds and in our brokenness that we are most open to God. When we let go of our need to control and are truly open to God's transforming grace, we find that darkness becomes a time of doing and uh, becomes a time not of doing and knowing, but a time of being and unknowing. And it's here that we can discover the source of mystery that holds us and surrounds us even when we don't know what's going on. I recently had a pastoral visit with someone who is living this psalm. And I won't share details, but I will tell you that what I witnessed and experienced that day was a person crying out to God for help. A person who is feeling anguish, desperation, despair, and anger. They have asked for help from all the places and people and professionals. They have cried themselves to sleep. They search within themselves for answers. And then they reach out to their church and their community for support. They have hope even amidst the challenges and their fear fear and no answers. And I'll be honest, I didn't know what to do or say. I listened. I prayed. I sat in the silent moments, not trying to fill it with some empty answer. And I surely didn't say, it will get better, like the poem says, because I don't know that. I don't know that it's going to get better. And at the end of our visit, we hadn't solved a single thing. There were tears, but there was also curiosity, hope, and a knowing that we are not alone, that God walks with us and feels our pain, our sorrow, and our angst. And you know what that visit was? It was church. It was holy. It was worshipful. It was prayerful. It was messy. And it was beautiful. God was with us, within us, around us. God was right there. And the person said that they knew that they were not alone and that their faith community accompanied them. This person knows their wounds find strength and courage as they continue to cling to God and the foundation of their faith, even amidst the struggle, even amidst not having answers, and somehow holds on to hope. Study after study after study show that people who live with any kind of mental health issue or addiction fare better if they have some kind of spiritual grounding or faith community to be involved in. One video that I watched had this wonderful quote. There's nothing in our medical or social sciences that is more protective against the epidemic of despair in this country besides accessing our spirituality. Wow. Being involved in a faith community can offer a sense of belonging, safety, and connection with others. And Almost every person I know who lives with addiction shares that they stay sober because of their connection to a support group and because of their church involvement. It gives them a sense of purpose, meaning, and teaches service, compassion, forgiveness of self and others, and cultivates gratitude about, among many other things. Our faith can bring us comfort. In our 8 o'clock service this morning, Anne read a modern take on Psalm 68, which is actually the lectionary psalm for the day, not the one I used. But each line in the psalm ended with a gratitude to God. Your presence is within us. Your presence is within us. And it's a reminder that God is always with us, no matter what is happening in and around us. And what I notice is that asking for help is hard for people, including me. Admitting that we are struggling is vulnerable and it opens one up for judgment and shame. And when we as a church community can open up, listen, and welcome, who knows what can happen, what healing can happen, what life might be saved. And here is another truth for us as a faith community. 
It can be hard work companioning and welcoming people with a mental health challenge. We will make mistakes, and we may need to apologize and repair. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed or inadequate. Sometimes we don't know what to do. And we have to learn that sometimes we have to set boundaries and expectations about what is acceptable behavior and what is not. And then we have to hold to it when the person pushes back or blows right through those boundaries and start all over again. But what else can we offer? Prayer, a listening ear, rituals like our worship services that provide structure, meaning, and food for thought and reflection, spiritual practices like walking the labyrinth, a gratitude practice, meditation, our healing journeys, companionship, going for a walk. It's simple sometimes. Showing up for small groups, going on retreats or fellowship of any kind. Go to lunch with Beth if you're feeling lonely. <laughs> Relationship with others is what helps us so that we don't feel alone. I can think of no better place than our faith, our church, and this church community to turn to when one is experiencing some sort of mental health challenge. And it's either funny or a lesson that as I worked on this sermon and preparing for today that I found myself struggling with my own mental health challenge the last couple of weeks. Some of you noticed my shoes, but if you didn't, I'm going to come out and I wear them because this morning in the shower it came to me that I needed to share my own story. So I'm going to come up to Lisa so that she can share what my shoes are. Wonder Woman, because the truth is that the way I deal with my anxiety is that I am an overfunctioner. I learned it as a child, and it served me well and has served me throughout my life. And I realized this morning and over the last few days that I have been in Wonder Woman mode. Overfunctioning in Wonder Woman mode might not be considered a mental illness, but it surely does impact my mental health and well being. When I am in this mode and in my overfunctioning self, I do more than I need to. Giving 100% isn't quite good enough. I should do more. My days get overfilled. I don't ask for help. My mind races during meditation like breathing space. The last two weeks, we're in this 10 minutes and my, heart, my mind is... I wake up in the middle of the night because I can't turn off my head. I forget about boundaries. I become overly responsible. Do you have everything you need? Do you have everything you need? Is there anything I can do for you? And really, I'm not conscious about what I'm doing, and I get careless, and I get crabby, I get short-tempered and snappy. And I found myself here, and I struggled and struggled and struggled to get this sermon written because, you know, it had to be just right. And I've been working on this part of myself for years, but the last couple of weeks it reared its head. And what woke me up? It took me getting kicked by a horse getting super frustrated in a meeting on Friday, thankfully on Zoom. Um, and I had to turn off my camera, walk into my kitchen, yell, get a nice cup of tea, and then come back because I was pretty well sick of having the same conversation for six months. But what else woke me up? Nicole asked me on Tuesday and then again this morning, what can I do to help support you? What do you need from me? I started to ask for people for help to muck my horse stalls because I can't do it right now. What else helped? I turned to God in prayer. I took a nice drive to Estes Park, which is stunning right now. I walked the labyrinth on my property. I came to the healing journey yesterday, and all of that came together to get me out of myself and realize that I'm not alone, that God is in my suffering. God embraces all of us, and I do not have to overfunction and be Wonder Woman. 
I think some of you can relate. So people of God, keep showing up and being present for one another. Keep asking for help. Have some prayer time, find some quiet, have boundaries, set expectations about what's appropriate for yourself and for others. Offer to sit and be present so that someone can get to their next moment, whether you solve a problem or not. Keep welcoming and holding space and keep shining the light of God for those who are broken by addiction or a mental health issue and shine the light of God on yourself for when you find yourself in a time of brokenness. May it be so. And let us take a few moments of silence to hear what else might be there for you. Greetings to you wherever you are watching this. For those of you whom I have yet to meet in person, I'm Reverend Nicola Marsh, pastor here at Community UCC. And we see that people like you are watching our live stream each week. And because of this, we are excited to be embarking upon an experiment. And we need you. If you are engaging with us regularly, finding meaning in what we are about, we would like to extend a special invitation for you to be among the first CUCC digital disciples. For signing up for just $10 a month, you will receive a t-shirt with the new CUCC logo. And we are also exploring the idea of offering other content to those of you who are part of this new and growing area of digital ministry. Sign up to support us in this new way at cuccboulder.org backslash support by clicking on the yellow donate tab and noting you are a digital disciple in the instructions. Or as always, we welcome an old fashioned check mailed to us at CUCC PO Box 3646, Boulder, Colorado 80307. Thank you for being and building beloved community with us. And thank you for your gift, whatever it might be.